me, these are two very popular people and you're not very excited. I said, are you excited? Yeah. Wonderful. Now, of course, these two don't need too much introduction, do they? So if they would be so kind as to join me on stage, that'd be wonderful. You've missed your cue, Norm. Would you be so kind as to join me? Thank you. He's a bit shy. Sorry. I couldn't hear what you said, so I couldn't hear. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> work, 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 work. You forgot the leg. Work, 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 work. Okay. Rihanna, Rihanna. Can't get it out of my head. Okay, I'll, I will start us off if that is okay. Yeah? Um, who would like Can to offer? I don't know what she's talking about. Is this. Uh, huh? Is that a Canadian accent? Is it a Canadian accent? Not quite. Where is it from? It's from America. America, yeah. Well, it's a big anything with me in it. <laughs> Um, I don't know, from my own experience, I like the Queen episode, I love the whole yeah. beginning to end of that. I thought it was a very good episode, but I, there's other things I like, you know, like the dog's milk and playing chess with Gordon and stuff and everybody's dead, Dave. That was a very memorable classic. You know, so, yeah, lots of them, really, lots of, lots of great writing. I wouldn't agree, personally. But because he's here. No, he, and Norman's great, you know. He, he ruined my first entrance, actually. Didn't he? Yeah. What, in Red Wall? Yeah. Why? I get in too many laughs. You, you upstaged my entrance. Sorry. What was that? What was the first thing? He comes out here, you know, how am I looking? Oh, how am and I looking? Remember, you were yeah. bamboozled for a little while. Yeah. Like that. That's what he was. At Norm, you're supposed to say your line. You never got over that, did you? Never. Never forgave him. Um, now, the show has a lot of wonderful, elaborate costumes. I was sort of wondering, maybe, do you have any say in what you get to wear, or is it just decided for you? Well, in my case, obviously not. Norman had the most complicated costume. <laughs> a polar neck. How much makeup should I have on this week, you know? I mean, just the head, just the head. The, on, the only input I had was the original pink suit. <laughs> the, the, the pink suit, I, I actually, the, the suit I wore to the audition, the pink suit was copied from that one, exactly, to the stitch. After that, it all hell broke loose. And I had no more input. I didn't really need it, if you look at them. <laughs> well, we're going to open Look at that little girl floor. sitting there. Look. She's thinking, what are they talking so, about? She actually, they know the show. And if you have shot. a question, if you put your hand up, my darling friend, you're oh. welcome to get it. They actually know the show, those two girls. What's he dressed as? Terminator. The what? Sorry, no. I don't know what that is. I've <laughs> got a, a couple of cheeky questions. Uh, first off, I'm going to both of you guys. Um, have you ever been starstruck when met anyone in the industry just... Have you ever been starstruck met anyone in the industry? Loads. Um, loads of people, yeah. I suppose um, I met Roy Orbison at, um, in Manchester. Manchester at the Midland Hotel. And I went up to him, I'd had a drink or two, and I said, thank you for the music. <laughs> Shook his hand. That's all I said to him, and on his yeah. way, dead within three months. <laughs> So, yeah, because, um, and funny enough, yeah. um, uh, uh, Bruce Springsteen was there that night as well, wasn't he? Yeah, Bruce, we didn't meet there. Bruce Springsteen, but you met him, we went in the gym, and the, the yeah. guitarist was the there. Order, yeah, the band, we ended up in the, the, in the room the after band. the band. Yeah, yeah, so we never met Bruce, but we met the rest well, of Well, no, he was there, but he was busy. He was busy in his hotel room. He was being the boss, all right. Being the boss. Uh, he's bossing sense. something around. That's it. No, that's not me. I'm sure. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes. I'm sure he's a decent person. Of course he is. A bit <laughs> decent person. Of course, like, like they all are in rock and roll. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yes, second one's Norman. Why are you 
Who said I'm not in there anymore? Are you making this up as you go along? Ah, oh, if you watch series 12, Ooh, you, may, on, you may you may you could be in breach be of contract. You have to spot yeah. me at the end of the uh, final series. If anyone the asks, final episode. If anyone asks, I never said that. I wasn't here when he breached his contract. Never said it. If, any, if anyone's filming this, so uh, anyone's filming wipe this it, man, why? Otherwise, I'll come and sue you. <laughs> Yeah. Any more questions? Work, 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 work. Um, how many of your lines did you improvise, or was it all scripted? We've never improvised a line in the show ever. The only improvisation would come from rehearsal. And you yeah. do it then, and you just say, right, they'll change a line and do it. I see, except once when I did the Everybody's Dead Dave. Uh, no, what was the one where I wish I'd never let him in in the first place? I, I had lived that at the end, but it, and uh, yeah, there was one little ad lib there. Like, like, but generally, because like, rarely not, it's all so because he wasn't envisioned. But normally in a sitcom, you can't do that because the the the, 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 the script is uh, camera scripted, so that every line has got a separate uh, command for the cameras to be in a certain place in a certain size shot. So if you had lived something, the camera wouldn't even be on you anyway. It's quite funny, changing the subject. Has anyone watched Murder in Successville? No. <laughs> Nobody? Yes, there. It's good, isn't it? There's always one. That's isn't improvised there? over 24 hours. Yeah, it's done in 24 hours and it's brilliant. It's bloody good. So there. And also Flea Bag. Anyone seen Flea Bag? One person, that's brilliant new comedy, brilliant. Come on, watch it, get on with it. Don't miss the goal. Any more questions? Look, the lady with the cold kneecaps. Uh, hi Danny, um, this is Theo. Um, did you enjoy filming Story Makers? Did, sorry. Did you enjoy filming Story Makers? Oh, story makers, yes, I did indeed. Um, it was a tiny little studio, the studio was about as big as this stage. And it started off as, um, they, uh, they were certainly going to be on um, uh, the, the cable sky version of BBC, and then halfway through it, they transferred to terrestrial. So, yeah, that was great fun. It was just me and two puppets for three and a half weeks that we shot, I think it was 67 shows. Constantly rehearse, record, rehearse, record for three and a half weeks. Yeah. I want to do some more of them. Imagine. Oh, how, do, how comes all the grown ups are laughing? You watch preschool shows? Hey. Work, 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 work. I'd just like to ask uh, Danny. Do you know what is responsible for 70% of the car accidents in Scandinavia? Um, it's a moose. Look at that, it's great, isn't it? What a gag that was. Danny, can you sing Story Makers being tuned, please? <laughs> Pretty please. Uh, story makers, story makers, working through the night till the morning sun. Story makers, story makers, stories are fabulous, stories are fun. Thank you. Another rendition of Tongue I just did one. I was singing along there. You didn't hear it. Um, okay. Okay. If you knew all the ad libs, then I'd do it. But you don't, do you? Who knows, actually, who knows the breakdown of Gadurbal? Uh, who knows the real lyrics? Because I saw a t shirt at the convention the other day and all the lyrics were wrong. And the lyrics are wrong on Wikipedia as well. Did you know that? 
Who's brave enough to tell me what those lyrics are? Double, 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 double day. No. Anybody? Anybody know what it is? No? He's got a job. How, 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 how come you know it so well then? And you, everyone sings it. But what, what happens when you get to that bit? You just go. Actually, it's a double, diggle, double, nibble, fargle, nibble, nay. Dan, three people just walked out. It's not my fault, no. We're talking. I don't know. What age did you first start to dance? Sorry? What age did you first start to dance? Um, I was about five. <laughs> it's true. I, I think, um, well, in, in shows, I was um, 18. That's old for a dancer. Yeah, I was about 18. I was dancing in a group called the Second Generation. I was dancing in my mother's womb. <laughs> How many? Can you do Dwayne Dibley? No, I can't. <laughs> I based Dwayne Dibley on Norman. <laughs> Dwayne Dibley? <laughs> Actually, I've got one when I walk this way. Um, have you ever either had one of your ideas written into the show, or do you have an idea you're trying to get written into the show? Well, no, I mean, it's, um, it's very... Um, it's very loose in, in the rehearsal, and that's where all the ideas come up, some accepted, most thrown out by Doug Mayer. Um, yeah, so it's it, it's not a thing. That, we don't have to crowbar an idea into the show. If it's if Doug thinks it's funny, it'll be it'll go in. If it isn't, it won't. And um, then you don't put any ideas up for a couple of days because Doug's kind of like really blunt. He'll say, "No, that's not funny." Uh, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. have that. No. No. Yeah. Well, it doesn't mean to say he's right. No, it just means he's the boss. Yeah, it means he's in charge. Right, a question for both of you. When you were both, well, when you was on the set for the first time, did you think it would grow into a show that was loved by so many and still be continuing to this day? Um, no, but I did think it was very special. I thought there was something very unique about the show. And I did like it and I liked the jokes I was doing. You think of yourself, because let's, we're all me, me, me's in this business. You think yourself first of all, you just think, oh, this is funny, a good funny little character here, which suits me, you know, deadpan and being cheeky and stuff. And, uh, but I never thought that, say, 29 years later, people would be queuing up to buy a picture of you and you sign a picture and charge them money for it. <laughs> you just think, it's like a pension in a way. <laughs> I'm, I'm 69, so I know about pensions. Mm. But, but I think, yeah, I mean, it, it, it makes up for the crap money you got in the first series. So I was getting peanuts because I was getting a voiceover fee. It was about 150 pounds an episode. That's all I got. Yeah. And then I said I wanted it to be visual, and they, I got my way, and it was visual, and it went up to 250. <laughs> So, yeah, it makes up for that, and it's fantastic. I mean, it's, it's marvellous. Yeah. Kevin Hart earned 80 million last year. What? Kevin Hart earned 80 million dollars last year. You cannot go around, Danny, worrying no, about... No, I'm just work. showing it in conjunction Taylor with your 200 quid a week. Yeah, I know, but Taylor Swift, you know, it doesn't matter. Money is the root of all evil. It's true, it is. That's why they didn't give you Money any. is a drug. It's a big drug. It's yeah. about being... And that's why they were trying to get you off drugs, and that's why they didn't give you that. Someone will always make a lot of money out of something, and lots of people have made money out of Red Dwarf, but we've done all right over the long run. You know, we're doing all right that yeah, way. We, we and I've never worshipped money anyway. I don't worship money. He worships comedy. 
I worship comedy, yeah, I like the art of... And boy, what? is he at the feet of comedy. <laughs> no. <laughs> Norman's the funniest guy I've ever met, actually. It's about time you told the truth. <laughs> We would Imagine like when there's another five of us in the room. We were like this from day 1987. One, and we haven't changed since then. We're still the same. Lots of banter or whatever you call it. Yeah. But, uh, but we have a laugh. I like, I like when the guest, the, the guest actors usually round the table at the, on the Monday when they first come in and all this, all this, um, all this happens. And this is how the, the guest actors are just like this guy. Question for either of you. I uh, don't want to come across as if I have a nipple fixation, but I'd like to ask you about Triton's nipples. I've got a, a running argument with my son about the, the purpose of Triton's nipples. In the earlier series, uh, they, they modulate body temperature and receive FM radio. And in series 11, he uses, uh, uses nipples as jumper cables. I just wonder if this was a... a You're talking about Triton? Yeah, yeah. Well, with I'm not crying, he's not crying, so I don't give a shit about crying. But you see, all, all those questions... Excuse are, my language. <laughs> all, all those questions are, are usually answered by Doug Naylor, and we, we usually sort of go, what? <laughs> I can't remember what I did last series. Uh, shows. No, that's cruel. That's no, no, it's just normal, man. Normal, normal. <laughs> um, I took both of you, really. Um, so much what advice happens. would you give to anyone who would like to get into the industry? Say, say that. Oh, say that um, again. Just stay with <laughs> There it Steve. is. That's me. Um, what advice would you give to anyone who wanted to get into the industry? Don't, Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> it's full of just it's horrible full people. Horrible people. It is. Now, if you really want to do it, do it passionately from your heart. Keep it, go for it. The best thing, it, the best thing I ever heard is, if there's nothing else you want to do in your life, then do it. <laughs> and you need to work that out before you start going into it. I've, there's a lot of casualties out there. Yeah. Both my daughters are actresses, 24 and 26. You know, and I didn't want them to do that, but they wanted to do it, so they do it. I'm not going to stop them. Uh, you know, it's a very precarious industry. What the hell? What is that? It's, it's, not it's a precarious industry, you know, really. Yeah. Okay, cool. Money like that. Um, Norman, you're quite classy and that works for your character. Danny, you, you're also quite laid back. How do you build up sort of the, the confidence or the box or what have you to, to play cat? Myth. <laughs> Yeah, well, um, you know, the whole thing about, you know, the, the dancer and that mentality of, you know, doing the warm-up, um, that kind of, to, that, that kind of went uh, hand in hand with when I started, uh, you know, acting because, like, my voice. It's not this mic, is it? I would keep that one off. He's boring anyway. Yeah, I mean, work, work, work. It's working, though. Work. Yeah, no, I would. Um, you said, yeah, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Yeah. Say, yeah, no. That's Doug and Rob. That's worrying though, but isn't it? Doug but and lots Rob. of people do it. They say, yeah, no. You just think, what's wrong with you? Um, uh, yeah. yeah, so, I mean, you can hear my voice is not. Turn him off. He do not need it. He's not even talking now, is he? Can't get a bloody word in. <laughs> I haven't said anything. 
so the first thing I have to do is like work for about half hour to get my voice up about two octaves because I've got I'm I'm, I'm uh, a baritone pretty much and the cat is. What time does this end? <laughs> no. You haven't got a finishing time, have you? Well, I just I, I, I've just had enough. What time's your train? I haven't got. I've got an open-ended ticket, so I don't have any train I want. <laughs> He did ask the question. No, I've not managed to. He's been just, so rude, isn't he? I'm just bringing in a bit yeah, more, just trying to edge things up a bit, you know, just a sort of... Someone ask Norman a question. I'm not being rude. Someone ask Norman a question. Well, we have another question down here. It's a question for Norman. Uh, what is the furthest planet from the sun? What's the what? Furthest planet from the sun. There you go. <laughs> I still don't know the answer. <laughs> but what is it though? Do you know? Neptune. Neptune. I, was, I was going to say Saturn. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. Um, this goes to both of you. Who is, um, in your opinion, the most temperamental of all the cast? <laughs> oh, uh, doesn't it show? He said, who do you think is the most temperamental of the cast? I just went, you know those Kenny Everett hands that used to be, uh, brother, 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 you know. Uh, yeah, I am half Italian, and uh, I'm born, born on Halloween, so it's obvious, isn't it, you know, I'm going to be the most temperamental, you know. But I'm the most honest, and I'm very fair, and I love Jeremy Corbyn. Why is it you can get merchandise for the rest of the cast, but not you two? You know, and yeah, Mer why can you get merchandise for the rest of the cast, but not us? Well, there was some, wasn't there? T-shirts and stuff? No. Uh, Have you seen the DVD cover? <laughs> Who's been following that? There's been, um, well, I call it DVD game. They put they put up a cover with um, Chris, Craig and Crane. Uh, apparently it was temporary. Yeah, well I've only been on the cover once. And that yeah. was at the end. When they, it was, was it right at the end? When they used to look at book. What the is that? <laughs> yeah, um, no I don't know, I don't know, so. I did have some bugs. But I've sold them all now and I don't want to do it again because they're so heavy to carry around. <laughs> um, Danny, what was it like making you jump between Red Dwarf to other things like MI High and Death and Paradise? Was it difficult to get used to or...? <laughs> Nothing for an actor, darling. <laughs> um, no, I, I like doing characters. I don't, you know... Uh, I, there's, there's actors who do characters and there's actors who play themselves and, you know, either, either or, it doesn't matter. I mean, I've just been, I'm not a leading man in very common, so it doesn't matter to me. I just, I can just experiment um, and that's what I, I, I like, the, the experimenting and the, um, the creation part of it, to be honest it's with you. the same with Craig, plays himself, I play myself, so does Chris Barry. <laughs> He's, he's turned into River now, he is River, he is bloody River. <laughs> and Robert puts on a silly voice. And a cute rubber mask. Yeah, in his rubber mask, yeah, so... We know, call him the Gimp. None of us are... <laughs> none of us are actors per se, at all. Speak that, for yourself, Mom. That was the plan when they first cast it, they didn't want to put real actors in it. And, well, um, they did at first. And they did, yeah, but then... They, 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 they realised they... It was the guy... Who, who was it, the guy? Alan Rickman. No, um, And Alfred Molina. No, but I'm talking about the John Lloyd suggested not to do that to Paul Jackson. John Lloyd, who does uh, Those were Black the two Adder. original so He, he was the one who said, don't, don't put real actors in. And that, and that was a good idea, because us lot, it worked a treat. You know, it just, it was the right chemistry. Basically, we yeah. were sloppy seconds. Yeah, we were just 
troublemakers, basically. Yeah. Uh, question for both of you. Uh, if there's any scene you could go back and reshoot or redo for any reason, uh, what would you go back and do? Oh, yeah, you know when they remastered them? And I played chess with Gordon. We shot that scene again with another bloke. And I'm going there, what was wrong with the original one? That was funny, the bloke was funny. He wasn't a great actor, but he was stupid looking and it worked. And in the end they kept that in and I was so glad because I just thought it didn't need to be changed, you know. So there's some weird things go on like that. Do you remember that, Dan, the remastering? Um, that's showbiz. That's showbiz. It is, but... It, it, you know, I don't know who thinks that that wasn't funny, that was funny. It's the same person that brought that woman back in Dallas in the shower or something, wasn't it? Didn't, didn't she come back as another actress in the shower? Oh, I don't know, now you've got me. I see. I don't know. What, in Psycho? Oh no, sorry, I'm thinking, thinking of another shower scene. Sorry. <laughs> Any more questions? I don't even drink or take drugs or anything, but I don't, I don't, need, I don't need to. Right, so Danny, did you come today in your mobile psycho? Because you give normal this done. I wish. Uh, <laughs> Is that Cockney geezer? <laughs> yeah, the, the bike and psycho, yeah, no. I, I'll, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't mind if it was one of the real ones. <laughs> Get them, them psychos where you hang outside. But, well, it's funny, I, when I took, my, I took my bike test about 20 years ago and I was, I was doing a show up in Derby and I thought one day I'm going to need this license and it took me 20 years to get a job with a motorcycle <laughs> in, in, in Death in Paradise, yeah. So, uh, but it still, it still came to fruition, so yeah, I'm glad about that. I do, I've got one on all four at the moment but that we, we made um, called The Unlikely Bikers. And it's a, it's a very, it's six short documentaries, only four minutes long about individuals who you wouldn't believe were motorcyclists. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Bloody nutcases. Yeah. Work, 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 work. If you could remove one episode, what would it be? Anyone with Norman in. <laughs> Spine. Just three quick small questions for Danny. Has Rumor found what you put in his locker yet? Uh, how's your shiny thing and have you caught that little fishy yet? What did I put in Rumor's locker? Yeah, but what did I put in there? Has he found it yet? If he did, he ain't saying. <laughs> the, the little shiny thing, it's still mine. It's not so shiny nowadays, but it's still mine. <laughs> uh, it's been rubbed far too much yet. Yeah. Okay, Bill's still in coach so One more question. We've got time for one more. <laughs> Gentlemen. Here. Um, is there another chance of a movie like Back to Earth happening? Not a hope in hell. <laughs> They've been talking about this movie for so long. And I, I, I personally don't know if it will ever happen. I, I think now they've got Baby Cow, the production company behind Red Dwarf, um, if the movie was going to happen, I'd, be, I'd feel quite confident that it would go, it would be made. Should they do? Should that ever happen? It's not going to happen. But um, otherwise, I've got too old. But they will be soon, won't they? You know, they're well, too my, I, Look, if you were going to make a movie, I mean, financially, if you've got eight and a half million viewers on BBC Two. Yeah, it's not even the top viewed channel, and you're getting eight and a half million, isn't that the time to make the movie? You'd only have to sell tickets to about 5% of that audience to have the top film in the country. So that just tells you, financially, somebody's not doing the maths, or they just don't want to make it. 
there's, you know, it's just, it doesn't make financial sense that why you wouldn't have made a movie when you had eight and a half million people watching. But the main thing is to make a good movie as opposed to, I saw Ricky Gervais, I'm a big fan of Ricky Gervais, but I saw the On the Road with David Brent and I was a bit disappointed. Well, if I was going to, if I was going to put my hands in, 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 uh, uh, myself in the hands of a writer who I thought could write a really good movie, Doug Nail would be high up on the list. So that wouldn't be my fear. My fear would not be that I'm going to be in a pile of poo because he's proven over and over again that he can write stuff that is even, he comes up 10 years later, far superior to these so-called great writers of today that are supposed to be writing the best comedy. And then Doug Naylor comes along and writes 11 and 12 and proves that they're not really that good. I've still got the movie that we were going to do. I've got it at home now. Good script. Yep. Good script. Shame. Well, I'm afraid that's all we have time for, so if we could give a big round of applause to Dan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Danny and Dan.